Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. 31-10 Bomber victory in Hamilton. I believe this is their first victory in Hamilton in like, I want to say seven years, something like that. Like, I think it was 2017 was what they were announcing. That was the last time Winnipeg had beat Hamilton in Hamilton. And, uh, well, that ended today, however long it was. Uh, and uh, overall, good game. I was only really able to see the first half of this game. The second half, I kind of sort of saw bits and pieces of it, but uh, I didn't have it get any notes down for the second half. But I got all the, the whole first half, so we'll go through that, and I'll kind of give kind of my thoughts on this game. Uh, first of all, Bombers go up to eight straight <laughs> victories, and it ends the Ticats' four-game winning streak. Uh, they do not get that fifth win. The Boveralls don't get anywhere, and that's actually where we'll start, where the Boveralls hit Kate and Milt on the TSN panel. Uh, for those who are not aware, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail of this video, uh, Bo Levi Mitchell, he had um, he had worn overalls to one of the games, and they had won, and then they went on this big winning streak, so they just he kept wearing it. Uh, well, we'll see what happens now, as uh, they now have got the first loss with the, with the Boveralls. And uh, let's get right into the uh, into the game. First quarter, Bombers start with the ball. Uh, there'll be a good push by them. And then there's a cool new play. Uh, and I think it's a new play. I don't think I've seen this in the playbook. I think Buck Pierce must have just added this uh, with Dembski running the ball where they kind of, f it was almost like a reverse play action where instead of faking the run and throwing it, they fake the pass and they end up running the ball where Caleros kind of steps back like he's going to throw it. Uh, Oliveira goes up to block, which even sells that to the linebackers. But then Dembski, instead of running uh, straight out, he then cuts across uh, right behind the offensive line, picks up that ball, and then turns it upfield. I'm not going to lie, really, really like this play. Uh, they got they, they got good success when they used it. Uh, it should be used sparingly. Otherwise, it's just it, it will lose its novelty in the sense of being uh, effective. Uh, but I definitely think that's something that he should pull out uh, occasionally. Uh, good play. Uh, I think that was, uh, I think Buck Pierce uh, added that into the playbook. So uh, if this is a new play, uh, keep using it. Love it. Um, Kalgankowski then would take a procedure penalty. And then Caleros then gets sacked. However, I'm not going to lie. Caleros at this point, this is in the first quarter. Uh, when he gets sacked here, this isn't on Caleros. I'm not blaming this on him. But, like, I don't know why he runs forward as clearly to his right there was a lot more room, which uh, his right is normally where he escapes. That's normally because he's right-handed. He goes out there. He's got a good sense of vision. And that's normally where he's out is. And that's where he was playing that last game. Uh, I guess he just didn't see it, though. Uh, he tries to run forward and just literally it, it's like the trash compactor from Star Wars. The walls close in and he's got nowhere to go. And so he gets sacked on the play. Uh, Newfeld hurt a little bit on this. However, as we'll discuss later, uh, Newfeld is very much fine. Uh, but and there's a bit of a funny play with him a little later, which I can't wait till we get into. Uh, and then we're on the the Hamilton 47 yard line, and we punt this ball. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just starting to get a little annoyed. Like Castillo kick, seriously, he's hit 60 this year. Uh, I understand that there was a game where he missed a sum and whatnot, but it's like, do we seriously lose all faith in the guy because he missed a few kicks on on a windy day? Like at the end of the day, just, like come on, like go for it, get points on the board. And so we punted at the 47 instead of letting Casillo attempt the 55-yard field goal is what it is. Uh, Bombers would then put uh, the, and then, sorry, the uh, tie Cats would go in. They would go two and out, and then they would then punt, uh, take a no yards penalty on the return. Bombers would then push, and then Kevin Clarcius with his first CFL touchdown. He gets the into the end zone, snags that, and the conversion is good. 7-0 Winnipeg. Then there will be a, a kickoff by Castillo, probably one of his weaker ones. It was a short kickoff, goes out of bounds, take a little bit of a penalty on that. Ty Cats push, and then James Butler going into the end zone, grabs a touchdown for Hamilton, and then the conversion is good, and it is a 7-7 tie in the first quarter. Bombers push. There would be a good pass for Ontario Wilson, and then Castillo would end the first quarter with a 22-yard field goal, making this 10-7 for Winnipeg. So 10-7 Winnipeg going into the second quarter. Second quarter starts. It would start uh, going back and forth, not a ton happening. And then there would be a good pick for Nichols. Nichols would get that, turn that ball around. Bombers would push, and then they weren't really able to get anything going for it. Uh, Ty Cats would try pushing. It would go back and forth for quite a while. There's not much happening until the Bombers would get back on offense, and there would be a big pass for Kenny Lawler. 
He brings that down the field. And then Brady Oliveira running with the ball. And uh, he gets kind of stopped around the one, but then he reaches try to try to get that ball in. As that ball hits the ground, it comes out. Everyone on the play thinks it's a fumble. And Patrick Newfelt in the end zone jumps on it. And he's got it. He like he, all the camera angles show that there's no way Hamilton had control of this ball. As not only did no one else have possession of it other than Newfeld, no one was touching it other than Newfeld. Uh, so it was very much Newfeld's ball. And so I was like, oh my god, did I, like did I just witness an offensive lineman get a touchdown? Which as the O lineman, that is the dream that you will never have come true. And it might have just come true for Patrick Newfeld. Uh, they do review it. Uh, however, he's, uh, Brady Oliveira was down by contact on the one and I'm like, sad Newfeld as much as I was glad that, that Terry Wilson then would drive it in, get the touchdown for Winnipeg. I wanted Newfeld to have that. Not going to lie. It, it was just kind of like a sheer novelty of it. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a team game. And if the team's putting up points, that's what matters. Uh, conversion is good. Making the 17 to seven for the bombers. Uh, there would then be a massive pass for Brendan O'Leary Orange. Not going to lie, I'm really happy he's getting his chance in Hamilton, uh, but I was not wishing for any success for him tonight, obviously, with him being against my Bombers. Uh, but I, I, I am glad to see that O'Leary Orange is having some success. He was a, a guy that we had had as one of our backups for a while who was definitely one of our better ones. Um, and so he, he, got a, he got his chance in Hamilton, and so he's doing decent. So good on him. Um, and then uh, it's getting close to the end of that second quarter. The Ticats looking to respond with a touchdown if they can. And then there would be a massive hit right near the line of scrimmage. Not in the end zone yet by, by Reddick Cramdy. And the ball comes flying out. And I lost my shit. And I was thinking, oh my god, let's get it. Don't let them get anything. And they would rule that this is an incomplete pass. I think that, I think that realistically the command center made, made the right call uh, on this. As much as I wanted to have possession of it. And then uh, the Ticats would would um, would have to settle for a field goal, uh, and Mark Leggio hits the field goal, making this 17-10 Winnipeg going into halftime. And this is where again I uh, I just I, I was busy a bit later. I wasn't able to uh, watch the uh, other end of this game. Brady Oliveira would run for a touchdown in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Uh, Terry Wilson uh, with a another short yardage. A uh, touchdown. All in all, stats for the Bombers. Zach Calera was would only throw it 19 times, 13 for 19, uh, 201 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. So uh, make sure to not throw any picks uh, tonight. Kenny Lawler would lead the receiving core with 78 uh, uh, passing yards, and then Nick Dembski behind him with 47. So not a ton in the passing game, uh, but where we were going to have the success, and uh, this was smartly remembered by Coach O'Shea and, and Buck Pierce uh, from their game a few weeks ago against Hamilton. Uh, was the success in the running game and how Hamilton was having a hard time stopping Brady Oliveira. And man, they had a hard time tonight. Brady Oliveira runs tw for 24 rushes. Uh, he got one touchdown on it, longest of 17 yards, an average of 6.1, 147 rushing yards for Brady Oliveira. And then even in, in his one uh, catch that he got, uh, his one reception, he got 15 yards off that. So he's been able to provide a lot. Sergio Castillo only has to kick one field goal tonight. The rest are conversions. Uh, he would go one for one with the, with the, being a 22-yarder. Uh, and then all in all, uh, not much I can complain about. Uh, both Terrell Ford as well as Nichols got interceptions. Terrell Ford, actually, that was one I saw a little bit later. Uh, and thankfully, this wouldn't be the worst pick of the night because if you watch that BC-Calgary game, uh, that pick six that Matthew Betts got off a screen pass, um, Jake Mayer had his head up his ass when he was throwing that. So, uh, Ty Cats, don't feel too bad. You didn't throw anything close to the, the worst pick in the night. Uh, Boo Levi Mitchell for the Ty Cats, uh, 15 for 28 uh, completions per attempt, uh, 217 passing yards, 7.8 yards on average, with two interceptions and zero touchdowns. Uh, stopped the running game as James Butler. Uh, only got 24 rushing yards on seven carries. They, he did get the touchdown for them. Um, and all in all, just a good game by Winnipeg. Uh, a good game where they were not a, uh, not giving up too much defensively. I thought defensively this was a lot tighter uh, than uh, the last two games against Edmonton, especially the most recent one, uh, or even though we won 55-27, gave up 27 points. So <coughs> I was glad to see 
the defense playing a lot more like they were when they were going through that uh, that stretch of games where they were just incredible. So uh, glad to see Jordan Younger kind of get uh, tightened down on that a little bit and get a bit more success out of that defensive core. Bombers move up to 10-6, and six, and with the win, they secure... At a bare minimum, a home playoff game. So they uh, will have either the West semifinal or the West final. If the Saskatchewan Rough Riders lose to the Edmonton Elks in their in their game uh, tomorrow, which will, I guess, be today when this video goes up, uh, then Winnipeg will secure the West final. Uh, but it all depends on if Saskatchewan wins or loses against the Elks. Uh, but no matter what, Winnipeg will have a playoff game at home as they will uh, be coming in at least first or second in the West. So, not going to lie, there's not much more. Like I, I can't complain. I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, I expected the Lions to win tonight. They did, although it was crazy about how close that game was for a while until BC just started running away from it. And not from them doing anything crazy, but from just Calgary absolutely collapsing in a ridiculous fashion. Um, I expect realistically Saskatchewan will probably win tomorrow's game. I guess today's game by the time the video goes up. Um, if they don't, awesome. Uh, would love that. Uh, but I think they probably will. Um, in which I think the Bombers might have to wait another week before they get another shot uh, to close that. As Winnipeg will be playing Toronto. Uh, a home game, last home game of the season for the Bombers on the 11th, Friday, October 11th. And then the Lions play the the Riders on October twelfth, where I think the Bombers have a bit uh, have a better chance at uh, being able to secure that West final uh, next week. Uh, but we'll have to see. All depends on this week. And next week will be a very very exciting game as well because uh, next week uh, I'll be there. Rick will be in Winnipeg at the uh, at the Winnipeg Toronto game. Uh, so I'll make sure to have some content with him on that. And then the following day, we are driving out six hours to Regina for the BC Lions versus Saskatchewan Rough Riders game. A game with huge ramifications. Honestly, I, I didn't realize there would be so many ramifications going into that game. I'm glad I'm going to be there. Uh, we will also be there with our Canadian Football Central microphone. We're going to be doing some some fun kind of, I think we're going to do some trivia, so maybe all that, uh, at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders tailgate. Outside the building there at Mosaic Stadium on Saturday, October 12th. So if you're from Saskatchewan or are going to be at that game, uh, check us out there or whatever. You can uh, you can uh, message us on Instagram or Twitter or whatnot. Uh, we'll be at that filming some fun content. Uh, it'll be a great time. Hope to see you guys there uh, or even at the uh, at the game in Winnipeg, Friday, October 11th. Let me know if you guys are going to be there. Uh, I'd love to meet you guys and all that sort of stuff. So. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, at the end of the day, our Bombers, they're still rolling, and I hope they keep going with that. And, uh, yeah, until next week. And make sure you guys uh, check out Zach's uh, content uh, for the Jets. Uh, Jets pre uh, wrapped up the preseason with their last game today where they got a victory over the Calgary Flames. And then also make sure uh, to check out Canadian Football Central where we do league-wide CFL content covering all nine teams um, and honestly, it's a lot of fun. We have these long, uh, at least, at least 30 minute, uh, to 40, sometimes close to an hour long videos, uh, previews and reviews of each week of the CFL, all the different games that happen. And me and Rick have a, a lot of fun on that. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, and positivity. And I'll see you guys next time.